Okay, so let's change the topic a little bit. So my name is Li. I'm a postdoc in condensed medical group in ICTB, and I work, I'm working with Sandra Scalo. Today I'm going to show you the phase diagram of iron up to the Earth's inner core conditions. Uh, Before I go to the neural network potential I developed for iron, let's, let me just give you a very brief introduction to the Earth's interiors and uh, to explain to you why we need to care about iron. So every year, there's a lot of earthquakes happening all over the world. On the one hand, it causes harm to human life and human properties. On the other hand, it brings invaluable information about the Earth's interior. And from these seismic uh, observations, we could get the seismic velocities as a function of the depth. And based on the discontinuities in this distribution, we could divide the Earth into three layers, the crust, the mantle, and the Earth core. As for the Earth core, we could further divide into the outer core and the inner core. For the Earth outer core, its shear velocity is zero, indicating it actually in this liquid phase. For Earth inner core, its shear velocity is not zero, suggesting that it's actually in the solid phase. However, geophysical studies won't tell us what is the major compositions in Earth interior. For this, we have to use geochemical studies. So now we know that the major elements in the Earth's interior, in the Earth's inner core, which is uh, made of iron, nickel, uh, silicon, oxygen, and sulfur. However, neither of these studies could tell us what is the most thermodynamically favorable phase for iron, because we have a lot of candidates such as BCC phase, the EGCP phase, and FCC phase. So for this, we use density function theory based method, because clearly it's very hard to perform diamond adversary experiments combined with X-ray diffraction pattern at Earth, Earth in local conditions. And a lot of, lots of these experiment data are not very consistent with each other. The last two decades has seen a great advancement in what we call the computation, computational mineral felix, which is a subject that focuses on the physical properties for different minerals that is relevant with the Earth's interior. This is exemplified by these two studies that published in the early 2000. These two studies are actually about the melting curve of iron after Earth core inner core conditions. And these studies actually use only 200 atoms. 200 atoms are actually enough to yield a very accurate estimation for the melting temperature. So why we need to use machine learning potential? Our study is really inspired by our previous work done by Ben Oshka. In their study, they perform ab initio molecule dynamic simulations in the NPD ensemble at a 360 GPA and 7,000 Kelvin. So they found out that if they perform simulations with less than 500 atoms, Okay, you can see that the BCC phase is no longer stable. It will automatically switch into the EGCP phase. However, if you perform simulations with more than 1,000 atoms, okay, BCC phase is now stable. So clearly, the stability of BCC phase will depend on the how many atoms that are used in your simulations. So we might wonder that whether the simulation results are converged with respect to the number of atoms they use in simulations. So for this, we couldn't use ab initio molecule dynamic simulation anymore because it's, it's very expensive. So for this, we use machine learning potentials. In these studies, we choose, uh, we choose this deep MD kit package to develop our machine learning potentials. I just want to mention one point, what makes the different, uh, difference between this kit and our other packages. This is because of the, the, the structural descriptor, you can see in the figure B. So if you want to know more details, you can read the original paper by Lin Feng Zhang and their latest work, which is uh, an overall, overall review, which is given by this paper. When to generate neural network potential, the first thing is how do we get this training data set? So in this study, we uh, follow the idea, which is called the optimal potential method. In this method, starting with the several configurations, we use a DPMD kit to train four neural network potentials. With these four neural network potentials share the same neural network pr parameters, but with different random states. Then we use these four neural network potentials to run MD simulations. Um, based on this, this 
error indicator, which is actually the maximum force deviations given by these four neuron, neuron network potentials. We choose several configurations. Now this is configurations what they are labeled with the DFT simulations. The labeled DFT labeled structures were then incorporate to retrain the four neural network potentials. And we repeated this whole process until the labeled structures fall, fall below around 10%. In this study, we would like to cover a different iron phase, includes, including BCC, ETCB, FCC, and the liquid phase. So considering the extreme conditions, we also want to cover in the pressure and temperature conditions that is starting from 4,000 Kelvin and 75 GPA to around 7,000 Kelvin and the four, uh, 450 GPA. That one, one point that it needs to take a very special attention is that because I work, work on this metallic system at high temperature, we really need to consider is a thermal electric excitations. Okay, so that means we now use the Momin's extension of the density function theory, which is also called a finite temperature density function theory. And the, now the extended correlation function will include the entropy difference between the non-interacting electrons and the interacting electrons. electrons. After the training data set is generated, uh, we retrain only one neural negative potential. And the final uh, training root mean squared error for pressure is around 0 0.5 GPA. And for energy is about five MeV per atom. For force is about 0 0.27 EV per angstrom. In order to characterize the performance of the DP model, we use the trained neural network potentials to run MD simulations for different phase and for at different conditions. Then we select several configurations what then were labeled with the DFD simulations by comparing the prediction given by the DP model and the DFD simulations we could calculate the test error. So for the energy, it's a test error for if the system is less than 200 atoms, it is around five MeV per atom. And for force about 0 0.3 EV per angstrom, for pressure is about 0 0.6 GPA. We also consider the final size effect. For this, we run a big simulation cell. For, for, uh, for example, for HTTP RN, now we use uh, 216 atoms, okay? So, but the performance is still consistent with a smaller cell and with the, with the, 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 the error in the training data set. So the overall consistency suggests that there's no underfitting or overfitting problems in my deep, uh, deep model. In the figure on the right, I should actually show this normalized force error because somebody is very interested in this figure. So it actually measure the, the, the force difference between the DP model and the DFT simulations divide by this absolute value for the force. So for all the conditions and for all the phase, the relative force error is below 10%. To determine the phase diagram at high pressure and temperature, we not only need to know the pressure, the force, and the internal energy is very accurate. We will also need to know the free energy difference between the DP model and the DFD, DFD simulations. For this, we run molecule dynamic simulations. Uh, this is only example. I give an example for the HCP RN. Uh, we run MD simulations at around seven gram per centimeter cube and 5,000 Kelvin with only 100 atoms. Then we also uh, select different uh, civil cell ratio. Then we select several configurations which was labeled with DFD simulations. So in a, in a figure on the top, I show the energy difference between the DFT model and the DP model. You can clearly see that the energy difference is a uh, force within around five MeV per atom. Let's think about the free energy perturbation theory. For free energy perturbation theory, in the first order, the free energy difference is actually equals to the internal energy difference. So from the table, uh, from figure on the top, that shows actually our free energy is very close uh, to, the DFT, to the DFT potentials. But we can also incorporate the second order corrections that is related with the standard deviation about this internal energy difference. So by plugging all the numbers into this formula, we derived that the free energy, the free energy accuracy is below one MeV per atom. So this is, I mean, it's very accurate. We also uh, compare the relative force error, which is very consistent between the DFT potentials and the DP model. In the end, the last property is very interesting. We compare the, dif the difference of sigma 3.3 three minus sigma 1.1 one one between the DP model and the DFT simulations. This, dif this this, this difference is very, is very important because for a, a nice solid phase, 
you would like to yield a very accurate cell parameters. Otherwise, when you do thermodynamic integrations for the solid phase, you will have extra elastic energy in it. So that will destroy your phase diagram calculations. Uh, from our study, this difference is, is four within around the two GPA and the absolute value is around zero. This slide is actually my personal interest because I would like to know whether some like a discrepancy in the literature is caused by simulations with different simulation package or different shoulder potentials or different exchange correlation functionals. So for this, I reused the previous uh, snapshots and redo DFT simulations, okay? Um, so, but for different simulation package, they have different zero energy. So now the absolute energy doesn't make any sense. So what we can measure is that the internal energy difference between the first configurations and the configurations in the, in, in the following. So you can see in the, from the figure on the top, you can see that for different simulation package and the exchange correlation functional or different uh, shoulder potentials, they give a very similar uh, or exactly the same energy difference. That actually indicates that if you do simulations with the bars, you will get exactly very similar the phase, phase diagram for iron comparing to the simulation given by quantum special. So if you found some great discrepancy between different studies, that must not be caused by simulation itself. It must be caused by something else. So we also compare the relative force. And the last point is that we compare the sigma, the difference of sigma 3, three minus uh, and uh, the sigma one one. Once again, this quantity is very, is very consistent between different, different potentials, okay? So that means if you run simulation with VAS, you will get exactly the C was a ratio uh, compared to the simulation by uh, VAS. However, in the literature, in the literature there are, for this quantity, the C was a ratio is scattered. Before we apply our potentials to a very big system, we would like to know whether we can do that. So we need to, again, test the final size effect, okay? For this, we run a very big simulation cell with more than 400 atoms, okay? But here, we don't do for all the phases at, a, at, a, at each conditions. We only select several conditions to do a test. Again, the performance is very consistent, consistent with the smaller cell. And based on free energy perturbation theory, we know that the accuracy of our free energy uh, is less than three MeV per atom. So that's very accurate. We also do a little bit comparison between the previous EM potentials, because I mean, the embedded atom method has been frequently used in, a, in the literature to study the metallic system. In this study, we use a parameter, parameters uh, uh, from this Balanoxico 2001 paper. So, for the, for the relative energy error, which measures the energy difference divided by the fluctuation of the energy, for the EM potential, is, is a relative energy error is more than 10%. And for the relative force error, the EM potential gives about more than 30%. So that is a little bit surprising because in the past, people think that the EM potential is very accurate, but actually it's not that accurate. So I don't think I have enough time. So I just give you, show you a few, few uh, cases and to explain to you that actually we can use a DP model to solve some long-standing problems in Earth science. So the first, the first, key, the first example I want to show is that the C versus heat ratio for HCP iron at uh, 360 GPA. For HCP iron, its coordination number is 12. However, for these 12 neighboring atoms, it is distributed unevenly, that means the atomic distance uh, that is represented by this blue arrow is different comparing to the atomic distance that is represented by this uh, red arrows. That actually has some impact on the sound wave propagations. So if the sound propagates in this way, they probably have a different sound velocities if, if the sound propagates in this way. So that has a big impact for how do we interpret the seismic observations. In order to calculate the CVS ratio, we could use a different method. For example, we could run NVT simulations at a fixed volume. Then we'll adjust the CVS ratio to, one, to find one point that the difference between the sigma 3, 3 and the sigma 1, 1 is zero. We could also use thermodynamic integration method. In this method, we vary the CVS ratio, then, then we use thermodynamic integration to calculate the Helmholtz free energy. We found one point that is Helmholtz free energy is, is at its lowest point. So 
Our, our results are consistent with the previous thermodynamic integration me method, but has a dis dis uh, very uh, large discrepancy comparing to this method. But I, so we couldn't figure out what actually causes this, uh, this discrepancy, but we, what we can see is that our simulations are converged. Comparing with the experiments, we can say that our c ratio is actually larger than the experimental work. However, for, for this such, this very difficult experiments, they only, sometimes you only have around two diffraction peaks. I mean, based on two diffraction peaks, you have two premises, you have two diffraction peaks. We, it's very hard to evaluate the error in this C versus A, C versus A ratio. In the end, we calculate the, the elastic constants of C11 and C33 as a function of C versus, C versus A ratio. Because in the past, people were thinking that if the C was a, C was a, uh, was a ratio is close to the ideal value of around 1.63, the C, C11 and C33 will be equal. But from our simulations, we found that it's not equal. That actually suggests that for elastic constants, it's not only related with the short range correlations, it's also related with the long range structure correlation. We extend our elastic constants calculations uh, at a 360 GPA up to 7,000 Kelvin. And its results from our study agrees very, very well with previous studies. And uh, based on this elastic constant calculations, we could estimate, okay, the sound velocities at Earth inner core conditions. And our, our calculations suggesting that for, the, for HCP iron, its shear velocity is actually 20% larger than the real observations. So that's actually the first order Earth dynamics problems. How do we explain the very low shear velocities at Earth in core conditions? So we are still working on that to find a, 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 a possible cause for that. In the end, I will show you the self diffusion. So this property is very, is more related with the reality properties for iron. So at a high temperature, high pressure, especially at, a, at a Earth, this very long age, so the, 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 the solid is no longer elastic. It has some rheology properties. So for this, we run MD simulations for HCP iron with 447 atoms. Then we also put one vacancy in it. Then we calculate the, the uh, mean square displacement. Based on the mean square displacement, we could, act, we could uh, estimate this effective uh, self-diffusivity. But in order to calculate the real diffusivity, we need to know the equilibrium vacancy concentrations for this, we use thermodynamic integrations. That is to calculate the frequency difference between the perfect crystal and the crystal with one vacancy. And our results are shown in the inset. So it shows that comparing with the previous work, our, 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 our value actually is 1.5 EV lower than previous estimations. And this, this discrepancy is clear by, by the harmonicity that is not included in the previous study. So by plugging all this, all this, uh, uh, free, uh, the for vacancy free and vacancy form of, uh, formation free energy under this effective diffusivity, we could estimate the self diffusivity for a real system. Based on this, we could also get calculate the viscosity that's not shown here. So for the take home message, the optimum potential method is very efficient in generating the training data set. So we have set up a very excellent uh, RN potentials. So we have well constrained the C versus ratio for the first time. Also for the first time, the elastic constant for HCP iron. The self diffusivity has also been determined. So this is also an ongoing, pro ongoing process in order to determine the whole phase diagram that covers from, uh, covers from the, the whole Earth's in, in interior in conditions. So thank you for your attention. Any questions? Thanks for the nice talk. It was a very wonderful work. So uh, in the beginning, you mentioned that uh, the Avenue um, MD is limited to hundreds of atoms. So, but uh, it, it is size dependent. You have to go to thousands of atoms uh, to decide uh, to uh, calculate the uh, the property that you want. But uh, in your model, you 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 didn't go to thousands of atoms to validate it, right? So. I, I, um, yes, yes. Although I didn't go to 1,000 atoms, but I did a test at 500 atoms. It doesn't show any finite size effect. So I think the potential is converted. So probably this, this phenomenon is not related with the long range of potentials. It's more related with the collect, collective motion of atoms. 
So that is different, different things. Last one. Uh, yeah, I, I have a question related to this. I mean, I know this is not your work, but it, the interpretation of this data seems a little bit dubious to me because if, if this uh, convergence from BCC to FCC or what it is, is uh, a ATC. rare event, right? This is a single observation for the 432 atom cell. Uh -huh. This happens. And then you have the, the longer trajectory on top that is twice as long maybe, and you don't observe the event, but is that really proof that this was the size effect at all? I mean, this could just be that if you run the top one for longer that at some point it switches, right? So that's also the point we, we would like to try. So, <laughs> yeah. Because for Ibinitio molecular dynamics, this is the largest cell you can, you can do. I think for this simulations, you will be run around one year. Okay, let's thank him again.